fall of 2022, we said, God, we're ready. We're ready for you to do like the biggest thing you've ever done through us. And we dared to believe that after nearly two centuries of reaching people and planning churches and sending missionaries and making all this impact that God was not done with us. That in fact, nothing in our past compared with the unstoppable good God wanted to do in the future. The most important part of the unstoppable good journey is about to begin. Some of my best memories from middle school and high school were participating in sports. For me, there's just something about competing together with a team, the camaraderie that you have that's just really special. And for me, I spent the majority of my middle and high school years running. It was something that you could share the pain of defeat and the joy of victory together. Because in these relay races that you needed each person on the relay to run their race well. But at the end of the day, it wasn't just their race. You needed all four people to run well. It was truly our race. But here's the thing, when you were running it, you didn't wanna be the person who let your relay team down. And it's this idea of a race that brings us to this series we're kicking off called Run With It. As we grow up, we discover that much of the world is running the same race, the get this race, the achieve that, the grow this, the earn these. But the race of life is not one when we arrive or we cross the finish line, but rather when we discover the race that God wants us to run, a race where we don't have to worry about the destination, but rather what good can be done on the way to the end. And this series is all about learning the race God wants us to run in this life. But in order for us to find out about where God wants us to run, we first need to discover that God has a story to tell. And we need to begin to understand this story. It's a, a big story, a worldwide story unfolding on a grand stage, engaging not just thousands, but billions of people. It is God's story, it is the world's story. And at the same time, it is my story. God's story intersects with and has implications on my story and your story and our story together as a mountain community because all of that is wrapped up together. And we're gonna discover the origins of that story today and in the remaining weeks of this series. And this is important, it's, it's relevant because I have a race to run, figuratively speaking, and you have a race to run meaning we got a life to live, decisions to make, a journey of discovering who am I, a pursuit to find the purpose and what you want to do in life, and a community to find like-minded people to live life together where you belong. We all wonder, what is my story about? What makes it a story worth telling, a life worth living? What is the course marked out for me and how do I run it well? All of us have and are searching for answers to these questions. And look, I know that this is a pretty big claim for me to make and something that's probably expected as a pastor, but I wonder if the Bible might have something for us on these questions, that God might have something to say when it comes to finding our identity, our purpose, and our belonging. Are we really trying to say that what we do here together might give us direction for our life and meaning for the actions and connect with something beyond me, that you and I, that we are involved in something that has worldwide implications. Are we really saying that? Because as I listen to what the Bible is saying, I hear it making exactly that claim, that through this experience, God is inviting all of us to hear it for ourselves. So that's what we're going to do. All runners to the starting line, on your mark, get set, go. It begins like this. Somewhere around 4,000 years ago, there was a man named Abraham, or Abram, as he was first called, that had an encounter with God. See, this God, the God who created the world, was calling him away from everything he knew. He was being called from his people and his country in order, in a lot of ways, to create a whole new people and in a way, a whole new world. And we pick up this story in the very first book of the Bible called Genesis. And it's in Genesis 12, we begin the story 
of Abraham, where God tells Abraham, go from your country, your people, and your father's household to the land I will show you. I will make you into a great nation and I will bless you. I will make your name great and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you. And whoever curses you, I will curse. And on all peoples on earth will be blessed through you. I think that probably anyone, even if you've never read the Bible before, can sense that there's something truly extraordinary happening here. I mean, this is really only a few lines from God to Abraham, but it carries huge implications. In a lot of ways, what's happening in this passage is God is going up to Abraham and passing the baton to the next runner. In a lot of ways saying, hey, I trust you, take this to victory, run with it. And this comes after what you would call a series of unfortunate events. I mean, we're tw only 12 pages into the Bible and it started out great. It was good. I mean, we just highlighted that in our last series, Built Different, that God created the world and it was good. That is the word that is used over and over again, that God's creation was good. Those originally created humans were created to be those agents that multiplied the goodness and blessing that God desired for the world but they sadly failed. I mean, you might have heard the quote to air is human, but that wasn't what it was originally meant to be and mean when it came to being human. Sin entered into this world and left destruction in its wake. Humans began living out this pattern of believing that God was holding out on them, that they knew better than God, that they wanted to reach for more. And the 12 pages into the story, God finds himself looking around asking, who in the world will rescue this thing? Who in the world will love me back and trust me enough to carry out all the good things that I desire for the world I made? The bad, I mean, is obvious and disastrous. Who's gonna partner with me to bring the good out of it? Will you, Abraham? God gives Abraham the promise of blessing, puts it in his hands and says, run with it so the whole world can be blessed. It's a promise and a responsibility. And it's a race and purpose and a mission that continues because God is good and faithful and keeps his promises. It continues because the God of Abraham showed up in Jesus. That's what the New Testament writers see when they watch Jesus come back from the dead. Peter preached this to the Jewish believers that the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his servant Jesus, that God raised him from the dead. And now we all can be a part of God's world blessing story through Jesus. So the question for you, are you just running your own race, writing your own story in the way that seems best to you? Trying to just do enough and get enough to have a good life a little bit better than the next person? Or can you see yourself as a part of God's bigger story and God's bigger purpose to use whatever blessings you have to bless others? If God said to you something like what God said to Abraham, and it involved leaving some familiar things behind, stepping beyond things you look to for safety, giving up some relationships in order to invest your life in God's good work, would you be ready to respond? What if it came with the reassurance of God's ongoing presence and led to new and good possibilities, not just for you and in you, but through you for the sake of others? Would that be enough for you to trust God and obey as Abraham did? See, it's interesting because Abraham didn't have a history of knowing this God to judge his track record. He had some idea of what was to come, yes, but it wasn't the full picture. Go to land, I will show you, God said. We're talking about exchanging the known for the unknown, what's proven for what's potential. And this is all without having pictures of knowing what his destination looked like. He couldn't Google them or Yelp them or TikTok them. Instead, he chose to believe that God is good. And he traded the security of his homeland and the known pathway of what his people, his age did in his tradition for the possibility of joining God's world blessing mission. Whatever it is, as you prayfully consider that and discuss it with your group, may you be reassured that of God's goodness, be encouraged of God's promises and nourished by God's presence so that you and we can run our race. So just like in a relay race, 
Let me hand off this baton to you and say, run with it.